Hello everyone, welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Mage in Joust. Now, I'm re-uploading this because, unfortunately, my, mi my microphone turned itself off right before I was apparently recording the previous attempt, so I did not actually, you know, you didn't get any of my voice there. Um, so, here we have the re-upload with my audio, with me talking, and... Mage is an interesting time for Joust because you're only really important at the start of a team fight. In all honesty, um, once you've used your initial full kit, you're not n as important because once one enemy dies, you, your area damage isn't as important. So it's pretty important to pick a mage that can fight. Uh, we're actually going to go with Ao Kuang here. It's pretty important to pick a mage that can do high amounts of single target damage. Uh, Anubis is one choice. You have... You've also got Baron Samdi, Poseidon if you build him right, Soul, obviously, uh, Freya, Kronos. You've got all these options. Actually, Kronos might be a bit more of an interesting option here. But these are all the kinds of... I'll actually go with this. These are all the... Oh, we'll go with energy. So, ultimately, you want a mage that can handle one-on-one -on -one fights well. That's what you're looking for, ultimately. And how you go about doing this, again, partially depends on your what mage you pick, partially depends on your build. Oh, I haven't updated his build for a while. Shoot. Alright, um, not a huge problem, necessarily. this, and yeah, here we go. Okay. Now notice that Hell is a more classic mage, I'm more of an auto-attacking mage here. So I'm basically a magic hunter, which is kind of where I want to be with this anyways. This works slightly better than your average... Ouch. There we go. Alright. They're playing this very safe. Mostly because Hell can outpoke a lot of them. There we go. Okay, good job by King Arthur there. There we go. Why are- oh, you're going for the mana buff. Alright, that's interesting. I don't think that was a good choice, but... There we go. That's something, at least. There we go. And you're doomed. We just need to hit you. There we go. <laughs> now notice, again, that I was able to box her without my abilities, which is pretty much what you want. That's the real problem with most mages in Joust, is when you get down to a 1v1 like that, the instant you run out of your abilities, you're dead. Whoever does more 1v1 damage wins, and most mages don't have great 1v1 damage. They're not really intended to box, so they don't. Yeah, no, actually, that's the smart choice. She probably should. I need to get back before I get killed. I don't have the mana for anything. Even though I can box, it doesn't mean I necessarily want to this early in the game. But ultimately, that's what you're looking for. Again, a lot of mages are going to have a hard time with this. Now, the reason why Hell works really well as a mage for this mode is because she's not exclusively just here to do damage. She also heals. So, she actually helps out the team in multiple ways. More than just doing damage. Alright. 
Also, Joust was a great opportunity to show off an ADC mage in this series. Outside of an ADC context. Nope. There we go. Now we got to back up. That was close. Okay. Well, I have the mana I need to ward off. Oops, I totally dodged her heal. There we go. <laughs> I love this skin. Alright. Now... I want to wait a little bit for Tiny Trinket just because it's going to be a nice little power boost there. There we go. Move, move, move. Move like a race car. She's in trouble. Okay. And he's going to die to here. I hit her. Good. Uh, I'm not going to catch up to her. That's not going to happen right now. That's fine. All right. Good dodge. All right, I'm just going to see if I can poke her out. If only I could hit my shots. <laughs> it's a problem. We don't talk about it. All right. I'm just going to waltz on in here. Okay, never mind. We're not going to waltz anywhere. I need my mana buff. Oh, uh, no, that's not mine. Hell should take this. I'll be fine without it. But I do want to actually drop it for her. Come on. There you are. There we go. No, that's yours. Okay. Nice of you. There we go. Uh, see, Amatrasu is really focusing out, um... Hell. And there we go. All you need is your high single target damage. Get out of here, punks. There we go. This could be problematic. There we go. Back it up, back it up. I'm leaving. I need mana. Grab Bancrofts. Alright, good. Speed on over. Let's see if we can't nab this middle camp really quick. I don't care so much about the damage camp right now. That's not that important to fight over. There we go. Hello, there we go. We're gonna slip around the back here. Oh, Alright. Oh, he dodged that. That's a shame. Oh, I almost got her. That's a shame. Okay. I don't think that we have the the resources for this, but all right. He's going to die. I'll tank, I guess. Shoot. Yes, barely got that. But we did get it.
There we go. Now, keep in mind, again, notice that I'm just focusing out one person at a time and eliminating them. That's how you win jousts. I can press on a little bit more here. No, neither of the other two have mana, which is a bit concerning. <laughs> she ults to escape? I haven't seen that very often. Ouch. Now I'm gonna get out of here. Now before I steal their mana buff. They're really going hardcore on this. Do you want to really mess with me? Is that what you want? You're not going to kill me, and I can tell you why. This is why. You're not going to get away. Hey, Rom. How you doing? How you doing, guy? The only real competition I have in this match... And now he dies, because he made a fatal mistake. Is she over here? No, she's not. We're not going to catch up to her, are we? Nope. Come on, there you go. I don't have any mana now. Time to go. On my way. I'm a race car. I see where you're going, and I will help you a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay. The fact that I killed him is somewhat suspicious. I guess I'll take the damage buff. I guess I'm out of here. I can't take the damage buff. Wait, I have 10 seconds. Ah, oh, it's gone. Never mind. All right. Oh, hey, Amadrasa. What are you doing back here? Silly goose. think I care about your oh, okay no nope. I don't like this fight I don't like this fight you're taking too much damage too quickly I don't think this is a good idea I still don't think that's a great idea considering they're all up and fresh and you were not so fresh Do we have we don't even have words down Yep. Okay. Oh, I almost got her. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Grab this, and then we're gonna grab this. He's really determined. <laughs> oh, he slaps her. Nice. He's got Soul Eater, I assume. No, he does not. He just absolutely dominates. That was really awesome, honestly. Now I'm gonna go for Telkines. And then finish up with a nice Rod of the Booty. Alright, and off we go. I'll probably stop for my mana buff really quick. I don't think she's... Let's just warn her to be careful really quick. I don't want to be up there quite yet. I want my mana buff. And she can't win a fight with Rom. She's doing damage to him right now, yeah. But the instant she closes that distance and gets within auto range of him, she's dead. 
Or she just gets slapped down by Amaterasu. There's another possibility here. Yes, I hit even harder now. Welcome. You can do about a punk. Nice. That was really instantaneous. I'm a race car. That was terrible. Okay. All I need is a moment. Good enough. Ouch. He tried. Alright. Nice try. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Let me just slap him down really quick. I recently got Vulcan the Diamond, so I'm really familiar with how his back his backfire puts him, where that put where that leaves him. Ah, I did not back up out of the Titan fast enough. Well, I didn't back out far enough. The Titan was still hitting me at the edge there, which is why I died. If I'd backed up a little bit more, I would have been able to pull off that ult and actually survived. Unfortunately, I didn't back up enough. That is probably not a win, because um, I'm pretty sure King Arthur is about to get killed here. Yeah, she doesn't have the mana to save his life either. She can probably ward him off, but... Oh, nope, this is going to go badly. And death. Yeah. They should have left after I died. They weren't going to be able to do it with Ram up. Ram was just going to be able to shred through them individually. I mean, the fact that Vulcan cleaned them up is more incidental to the fact that Vulcan is just doing better than Rom. But, that just happens to be because I'm not 100% sure the Rom knows what he's doing. This build is kind of weird. I'm not sure why he would start with Chin Size and a Joust with only one tank. I'm stuck on minions. Alright. Let's uh, pretend that never happened. Okay, that did not go well for me at all. So much for my ambush. Alright. My keys are wrong. I was pressing the wrong keys. All right. Stop backing up. I'm like, what is going on? It's because I've accidentally moved my hand and I was pressing the wrong keys. I don't think they have the damage output for this. No, they don't. Because going to come tearing out of here. Clear the... No, clear the way. There you go. There you go. The problem here is that Rom could theoretically ult... Well, no, without minions he can't ult the Titan. That was very close, though. We almost lost. That was very close. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. I see where he's going with this. He's right. There we go. And... Success. Nice gold boost there. There's Amaterasu, who I don't want to fight right now. Ah! That was me. 
It was my fault. I shouldn't have been there. Not by myself, anyways. <clears throat> Vulcan's just gonna go around and try to take the Titan by himself. Nope. They're actually gonna try to wipe the whole team. Which is interesting. And that's it. Now, I'm going to actually leave this up because it is an excellent example of how Joust can turn very quickly. It is a very interesting scenario with the 3v3 uh, teams, and it was also a really great example of how it can really make a difference depending on what mage you are and the, how you build. Now, I want to point out some things here that I noticed throughout the match. First off, it is important to note that Vulcan actually does pretty well in the whole 1v1 scenarios because he can throw down his turret and Hell doesn't have that option. Yes, Hell has a lot of damage, Hell has a lot of abilities. So she's a little bit more immune, but Hell's impact on a, on a team fight in a, in a Joust is not as strong as her impact is in, say, any other mode because you're healing up to five people, but in Joust you're only healing three other people, well, two other people and yourself. So, it, her impact in Joust is not quite as strong. Vulcan, of course, like I said, has his turret, but his ult is not quite as useful. Now, the ROM clearly wasn't quite building um, sanely. Chin size is not something you want to start off with. But regardless, again, notice that uh, King Arthur and myself did really well. Hell didn't, which is fine. Amutraz was the only one who did really well in, you know overall on their team. Actually, she had a lot more gold, probably because she was actually doing a lot more of the work here. And it just takes one bad team fight to really turn around. Now, in this particular case, it was two bad team fights for our team to lose, despite the fact that we were ahead, but Vulcan with his turret was basically operating like two and a half people, and Hell's impact is just not as strong comparatively in Joust as it is in other modes. Now, Ultimately, that's what it comes down to. Uh, again, Kronos is a really excellent mage for Joust because, as you saw when I was fighting Amaterasu earlier, he does really well in 1v1s. Now, how exactly how well he does in 1v1s really depends. Once uh, Amaterasu got the Frostbound Hammer, that changed things considerably for me, as well as Toxic Blade. So after she b finished Berserker's Shield, she was, to some extent, counter-building me with these two. Stone Cutting Sword was more of a counter build for King Arthur, but these two were really a huge problem. This did hurt me, but not quite as much. But she built those two for me. This was specifically to counter me, because I was the only one using auto attacks. Hell wasn't, King Arthur wasn't. So these were built for me specifically, uh, which is why she was able to start beating me in 1v1s, because she was specifically counter building me. And even then, I could still put up a really strong fight, and quite frankly, once I got my hands on Rod of Tahuti, I probably would have been able to get back into beating her if I could just get her down below... A quarter of her health or whatever so there is that she counter built specifically for me to bring that in line and again i was also basically playing a magic adc not really a, a true mage which does alter how my performance would be compared to the average mage again notice that even though vulcan fares slightly better in 1v1 scenarios both vulcan and hell did not do particularly well the Rom didn't either, but the Amaterasu, who in fact does box very well, and to, just to reiterate, if you don't know what boxing is in, an, in a MOBA, a box, a boxing match in MOBAs is a 1v1 fight. Alright, Amaterasu is pretty good at boxing, for a couple of different reasons that I'm not going to get into in this video. Kronos is good at boxing. King Arthur, okay at boxing. Hell, not really. Vulcan? Slightly. His turret really helps, but if you position that wrong, or if the enemy has enough uh, damage abilities that can hit both Vulcan and the turret, that's pretty useless. But ultimately, Joust is a very odd, a very odd scenario for mages. Now, I do want to talk about some mages that do play very well in Joust here. Um, obviously, I just talked about Kronos as being one of them. And I referenced a couple of other ones. Al Kwong, Freya, Ulrun. Soul. If you're noticing that these are all the auto attack focused mages, this is why these generally these mages generally perform very well in Joust, just as Kronos did in that last game. Um, Anubis with his ult can 
do really well, but then basically what you're waiting for as Anubis is you're waiting for your ult to be ready before you encourage your tank to start fights, because after the initial wave, you know, after your initial ability usage and the first whoever dies, your ult is basically going to be the ability that allows you to continue to extend your usefulness past the initial fight, right? Um, Baron Zombie's ult is a similar thing. Actually, uh, I played this in the, the the one in which I was muted. Baron Zombie plays very similarly to Anubis. You kind of are just looking to poke until your ult is up, and then you're really ready to commit because you're going to use your ult to ensure that you're taking somebody with you at the very least. Uh, e set actually can play very well in Joust. I've experimented with this a little bit, and while I'm not very good at it yet because obviously I haven't got her to diamond, I haven't played her quite enough to get good enough with this, but if you build her auto-attack focused, she actually plays pretty well in Joust, in my opinion. I still, there are still other mages that I prefer to do this with, specifically Poseidon, who does even better with this, because you can actually lock them down to the Whirlpool, which Ezet doesn't have, and then you can auto-attack them to death after the fact. So he actually plays this a little bit better. Again, this is with an auto-attack focus. If you're going with an ability focus, he has a bit of a harder time, because then you're blowing all of your teamfight abilities on a single target, which generally you don't want to do as a mage. Um, unless, of course, there's no other option. But either way, you don't really want to go into that direction. Um, other than these, uh, Zeus build auto attack, I've tested and have done a very good job with. Um, I pr actually prefer building Zeus auto attack. It's just a personal preference. Uh, he can go ability or auto attack. He plays really well with both. Playing him auto-attack focused does really help him out in Joust. Now, an interesting exception to the usual rules, and probably the only exception that does in fact exist, is actually twofold, right? Well, quasi-Hades, but that really heavily depends on how you build, and he still has some trouble in 1v1s because, quite frankly, his abilities are all AoE. So he does still have a little bit of a problem, but Merlin is an interesting scenario, is an interesting exception to the usual rule of a mage with a large amount of area damage usually wants to build auto attack or just don't use them. Because again, the mages that I've pointed out that can convert really easily and really effectively to auto attacking, Eset, Poseidon, and Zeus, can be very good in Joust. Merlin doesn't need to have his auto attacks be really good because a lot of his damage actually plays pretty well in 1v1s. Now, not so much his, uh, what is this, the Cosmic, I believe, the Power Cosmic? Lightning? No. Uh, fire, Ice, Arcane, not the Power Cosmic. Uh, the Arcane one, which is the Eclipse and the Vortex here, these aren't too useful in 1v1 scenarios, but I'll tell you what is. The ice and the fire are pretty good in 1v1 scenarios, and actually just him changing between these with Elemental Mastery, he has an explosion that hits around him in a very small radius. So actually, he doesn't really mind getting into 1v1 scenarios, because he actually plays really well with these, especially with Overload, where you alternate every ability with an auto attack, and if you've built Polynomicon, he actually plays really well in 1v1 scenarios. Again, this is mostly because of his kit, but he maintains his AoE damage while still being able to pull off some impressive boxing matches. So it is something worth mentioning that Merlin is the only exception to the rule that I've seen that doesn't have to rely on his ult to sustain him into a 1v1. Again, Baron Somni and Anubis also have good AoE damage and have really strong ults that affect one target, and they actually can do very well in Joust if you're very careful and you play them properly, but Merlin doesn't really care. Uh, I think Merlin is underused in Joust, as a result. Um, also, I would like to mention Hera can do really well. Again, she's more in line with Anubis and Baron Samedi, but her ult lasts longer. Her ult is Argus. Uh, Argus will absolutely slap the snot out of anyone trying to box you. So either they have to turn around and specifically focus out Argus first, or you basically win, because you can silence them and prevent them from attacking with poly polymorphs, so you prevent them from doing anything. You can sustain yourself through the fight with the Vine Shroud, which also makes Argus do AoE damage. You have double hits on Royal Assault at melee range, which you want in boxing. So, as long as Argus is up, Hera can box very well. If Argus is dead, 
she's going to die. So again, this is very reliant on her ult being up and active to whether or not she can actually do well in that boxing match. Now, you'll notice that despite the fact that I mentioned Merlin being able to switch between his two forms, that I didn't really talk about Tiamat or um, uh, Hell being supremely good in Joust, despite them theoretically having a similar idea. Well, the problem with Hell is all of her abilities are AoE, and one of them doesn't even do damage in either scenario, and her Inspire, which is the healing aura, also does not do damage. So while she can generally sustain herself long enough to get away from an ugly 1v1 and an ugly boxing match, she can't necessarily actually succeed in a boxing match where a lot of other mages would. It's kind of the same for Tiamat, but mostly because her ability to actually switch between the two forms, at least in the early to mid game, is too long. She can, pl uh, she does actually do really well in Joust in the late game, but the problem with this, and the reason why I still don't recommend Tiamat in Joust, is because by the time of the late game, you've probably already either won or lost. You'll notice in that last game, we didn't even hit level 20. And that's just, picking Tiamat in Joust is a risk because you're really banking you're going to get to that late game in order to use Grounding Dive or the other version um, in time to actually make that matter, right? Um, beyond that, Morgana, uh, not Morgana, the Morgan also can play very well for a similar reason to um, Ao Kuang. She stealths up to them, she slaps them with deadly aspects throws out a Dark Omen, you're really golden, especially if you have Polynomicon, Deadly Aspects, Poly Hit, Dark Omen, Random Other Shot, it's a really wonderful time. Also, she can steal somebody else's kit briefly, ideally a Hunter, so she actually can play. If you know what you're doing with the Morgan, she plays really well in Joust. If you don't, you're probably going to be in some trouble. Um, Thoth, I don't recommend him, and a lot of people might say he'd be good in Joust because of his range and the fact that you can throw up the, uh, not the Glyph of Pain, the, yeah, the Hieroglyphic Assault. No, this isn't it. It is the Glyph of Pain. Yes. Uh, the Glyph of Pain allows his auto attacks to do extra damage, which, on paper, does sound like it would really help him in boxing, but the problem is, is you have to actually shoot through the Foolish thing, and in a lot of boxing matches they're going to probably attack you from the side you can't shoot through, right? So, unless you're in a boxing match with a ranged enemy, which in most joust matches is only going to be the enemy hunter, this isn't really going to work out too well. So, you'd be able to effectively box the enemy hunter, but even then, they're probably still going to be out-damaging you. So, Thoth generally doesn't do as well in joust as you would think. Now... Nuwa, again, if you build auto-attack... I forgot about Nuwa for a bit there. If you build Nuwa auto-attacking, she actually, again, does play really well, because you can actually use your clay soldiers as body blockers, throw some auto-attacks out there, and then before they die, stun the enemy with them, and especially since if you hit all three clay soldiers and they all explode, you actually do a lot of damage uh, with that. So if you build her with at least some auto-attacking focus, she does play really well in Joust as well. Her ultimate isn't quite as useful, so I still am a bit iffy on this overall, but she can play very well otherwise. Beyond this, the rest of the mages tend to fare a bit poorly in Joust. Really, they're going to be... Either you're going to be blowing your whole kit on one enemy and then dying, or they're going to catch you alone, you have to blow your whole kit, and then you're useless for the next team fight, uh, whether or not you killed the target. Playing a regular mage is risky, and I would recommend any of the mages that I just talked about here as, as actually being functionally useful in Joust, uh, because these are the mages that are, will really help you do well in Joust, and this is actually why I recommend everyone keep a, what I call a quote-unquote non-standard mage in their back pocket, unless you main Merlin, who is just good everywhere, I'm going to be really honest. Um, you really want one mage that really focuses well on AoE damage, and you want a mage that just does well in some other scenario, whether it be one of the ADC mages, or a mage that can play ADC if you build them a specific way, or one of the, uh, one of the other, you know, Anubis or Baron Samdi, basically, or Hera. Uh, but with that being said, that is Mages in Joust. I hope you all enjoyed. If you liked this, please like and subscribe. Finally, now that it has sound, you can actually hear me say that. If you didn't, please ignore me. And uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, or requests, please leave them down in the comment section below. And uh, have a great 24 hours.